Step number five is to figure out what study strategies work best for you. So I'm gonna give you two seemingly conflicting tips. The first one is don't be afraid to change your study strategies. Even though you did really well in undergrad, that maybe you weren't as efficient as you could be in your studying. And when it comes to med school, because it's all about the volume of material that you learn, it is really important to try to figure out how you can most efficiently study. So don't be afraid to try different things, especially in your first year. That's when you're supposed to be trying to study strategies and figuring out what works best for you. And then my second tip along with that is don't be afraid to use the same study strategies. If you know something's worked for you in the past, it was efficient, it was effective, then don't be afraid to continue doing that. Just because you're in a different environment, you're learning different material, doesn't mean that those same strategies won't work. So I personally like to use a combination of different strategies. For the most part, this is what I did. But during the week, that's when I would go through lecture material for the first time, and I would go through about five slides at a time. So I'd read through five slides, try to get a good understanding of what was going on, and then I would either write out from memory what those five slides were trying to say, like main points, I would include all the details that I seen, that seemed like really important, and just like a summary statement of those five slides. So I would write that, or I would just say it out loud, like I was teaching someone, either way, or sometimes both, if it was something difficult and I really wanted to nail it in. And then once I did that successfully for those five slides, I would read the next five slides and do the same thing. But before I would go on to slides like 10 to 15, I would go through slides one through 10 and again, either write down or like verbally say the main summary and the like major details of those 10 slides. So by the end, I had gone through the first five slides like a ton of times. And at the very end of the lecture, I would have been able to um, summarize the entire lecture from memory. I have pretty much been able to memorize like every single slide of every single lecture, which I don't recommend doing, but it wasn't just that I was like blankly memorizing slides. I was really trying to understand them too. So that way when I got a question that wasn't super straightforward, I was able to think through it. And the way that I made sure that I wasn't just memorizing and that I was really understanding is that after I'd gone through the whole lecture in the way that I just talked about, I would actually go through the objectives that each lecture provides and I would try to answer those questions from memory. And if I could answer those questions from memory and um, really understand it and there weren't any hitches in my um, comprehension of what was going on, then I would feel secure and I'd feel like, okay, yeah, I'm, I've finished that lecture and I'll move on to the next one. So like I said, usually I'd be done with all the lectures for the week by Friday at 6 and then do my whole break thing. Then by Saturday afternoon, when I was reviewing that material again, I could pretty much recite like any slide that you could name by memory. So I felt like I had a really good handle of the material by that Saturday. So the main study strategies I would use were reading and I would like highlight and annotate and all that kind of stuff using OneNote and then also um, writing my notes out and I would write my notes always from memory like I wouldn't just like read something copy it down I would read at least five slides and then write it down because I felt like that forced me to write it in my own words and not just memorize words and information as opposed to really understanding the concepts. And then the last, which I think was the most effective for me, was talking out loud or teaching the material. So regardless of if you have someone to actually teach, you can pretend like you're teaching and it might seem a little crazy to do in public, so I wasn't really one to do it in public, but if I was in a study room on campus, like by myself, sometimes I would like talk out loud quietly or if I was at home studying in my bedroom, like no one would hear me, so I wouldn't really feel like I was bothering anyone that way. But there are so many different types of ways you can study. Some people watch videos and like listen to audio over and over again, or just like quiz each other. So it forces us to think in different ways since we think in different ways. But bottom line is, no matter what study strategies you use, just focus on really understanding and building the foundations of medicine as opposed to just really memorizing to get a grade on an exam. That's not gonna help you in life or on your boards. Tip number six is to set up your environment for success. So now that you've created this absolutely beautiful study schedule, all you have to do is actually study. So there's a few things that you might take into account when you are studying or figuring out when to study and where to study. So again, it all boils down to being aware. Being aware of how you best study, 
what location best suits you, um, if you like having other people around, if you like listening to music. So particularly one thing I think was, that was really important for me was where I studied. So I kind of like bopped around between like three main places, campus, home, and coffee shops. So I started off mainly studying on campus just because I felt like going home, I wasn't as focused and I wasn't as um, disciplined because I had other things to distract me. I had like awesome roommates that I loved talking to, but also like use them to procrastinate. And so I would always study at campus and I would just get one of those private study rooms and I would just write everything out on the whiteboards. Well, I did that for months probably, like every single day, same study room. And then after a while, it kind of drove me crazy because also there were no windows in that study room. So I was just like, okay, I need to do something different because this is just not working for me. So that's when I started playing around with coffee shops. Um, I mostly love going to the coffee bar in Reno. It was like my favorite place to study, um, but it was kind of freezing at night and it got really dark because the lighting wasn't the best at night. Um, so I did that for a long time, but then I kind of got bored of that place too and had to switch it up. And so then I started dabbling with studying at home and found that I was better able to focus. I don't know why, maybe it was just because I was used to how much I was studying and I got more disciplined so it was easier to study and not get distracted at home. So I did that for a while. And so I kind of just rotated between those three um, just based on how I felt. Like if I woke up in the morning and I was like, I really want to be around other people, like I don't want to be alone, then I would study on campus or I would study in a coffee shop just so I'd have other people around me and not feel so isolated or I'd always have music going. And um, I don't know, people are always like, oh, classical music helps you focus and whatever. But I, like that like just puts me to sleep. I cannot listen to classical music while studying. Honestly, for the most part, I listen to Spotify's rap caviar. And everyone's always like, how do you study to rap music? But it's like so intense that I just feel so focused and that works for me. So figure out what kind of music you like to study to and that pumps you up to study. <laughs> And then also decide if you actually want to study with other people or if you want to study alone. So like I said, I was more of like a loner study. I liked to be focused. I didn't like to be distracted. But I also loved when I would quiz my friends and they'd quiz me. So there's always a time and place for studying with or without people. And again, you just have to figure out how much you want to study with other people and how much you want to study alone. Other ways that you can set up your environment for success are for me, this was like number one. I would turn my phone onto airplane mode because I got distracted so easily. So I put my phone in airplane mode and then it wasn't enough to do that. I'd also have to like hide it. I would either put it behind my laptop where I couldn't see it or put it in my backpack or hide it under a book. Like I could not see it or I would be like, oh, I'm gonna check it really quick. For you MacBook users out there, um, I would always disconnect my iPhone from my MacBook so that way my iMessage wasn't going crazy or I wasn't getting phone calls through my laptop because then I'd get curious and be like, oh, like who's trying to talk to me right now? And then I would definitely check my messages. So I would always trim those off. These last two tips aren't necessarily about studying, but they're really important to keep you studying at an efficient and effective way. So tip number seven is to be careful with your mental and physical health. That to me means exercising daily, taking breaks when you need them, like meditating, and then also eating super healthy and getting enough sleep. And so life is all about balance. There's gonna be times when you're so tired, you just wanna like watch Netflix and eat horrible, horrible food because it makes you feel comfortable for a second. And then after that, if you are aware of yourself and you recognize how your body feels, for me at least, I feel so tired and I just wanna to go to bed and I'm not gonna study anymore after that. So I just recognize that the healthier I'm living, the better my body feels, the more energy I have, the more focus I can be when I study. I always work out in the morning, like I said before. If I don't work out in the morning, I'm so tired by the end of the day that I'm not gonna make it there. And it just gives me that extra boost of energy in the morning to focus for the entire day and not feel like so just fidgety, I guess. Eating healthy, I meal prep every Sunday, and I think that that saves me a lot of time. It prevents me from eating something unhealthy because I know I already have food ready and I'm not gonna waste money buying something unhealthy or snacking on other things that 
aren't gonna make me feel good. And also, meal prepping on Sundays is kind of just like a really nice break for me because I love to cook and bake. So having an excuse to do that by meal prepping is just another way to procrastinate but also be productive. So I like that balance there. And then also I think it's important to schedule in breaks. So like I said, I always take Friday nights off and then sometimes Saturday morning depending on if I was caught up or not. And then usually Sunday mornings I would also take off because um, most Sunday mornings I'd go to brunch with my boyfriend. That was just kind of a thing we'd like to do because we love brunch and we love breaks. And then I always try to make it a point to go to yoga at least one time a week. So when you take your breaks, like really take a break. Like don't say you're gonna take a break by working out and then bring your notes with you and study for an hour. That's not a break. Even though you're doing something else that you might enjoy, if you're also trying to study at the same time, you're not gonna feel restored after that. So if you need a break, just take it. Don't feel guilty about it, do it. In the morning when I exercise, I refuse to ever multitask and study because that is my me time. Like sometimes while I'm working out, I'll listen to podcasts that are fun for me, not necessarily educational, or um, I'll work out with friends and that makes it a lot more fun. But yeah, that's like my me time, that's my break time. I don't, I don't multitask. Some people do, that's totally fine. Like do it if that helps you and you feel good afterwards, but that is not a break. <laughs> and then also get good sleep. Like, I know it's hard sometimes because you stress out and you feel like you have to put in all these hours to study, but I always prioritize trying to get at least seven to eight hours a night. There were some weeks that I only got five and a half or six hours of sleep, um, and I felt horrible <laughs> because I don't function well on lack of sleep. Regardless of how busy I felt, I would always try to prioritize getting seven to eight hours. If you prioritize your time and you're efficient with your studying, it shouldn't be too hard to get seven to eight hours of sleep. If you feel like you're starting to get burnt out from studying, just recognize that within yourself and respect that and say, okay, I'm starting to feel burnt out, I need a break, that's okay. If you feel guilty and you still wanna be productive while you're taking a break, then do something that you're gonna to have to do anyways. So like if I felt like that, I would do my laundry, I would meal prep early, or I'd catch up with family and friends. Keeping in touch with your friends and family is so important because they are your social support. So when you're struggling, just talking to them can make you feel amazing. And then if you're involved in other things like research or if you're volunteering or if you're um, putting together a project, whatever it is, then do those things too because they're still productive and you don't have to feel guilty for doing them. My last piece of advice, tip number eight, is not to compare yourself with other people. I know it's so easy when you're in med school to just look at how intelligent your whole class is. Like everyone in my class is so smart and it's so easy to feel intimidated. But just recognize that you're all here to learn. You're not here to outsmart each other. You're here to support each other so you guys can all become the best doctors that you can become. Don't think of being successful as doing better than this person or that person. Just think of it as doing the best that you possibly can given your circumstances, your educational background, whatever home life struggles that you might have. Everyone is so different, so that just kind of makes it seem ridiculous to compare your test score to someone else's. I did my undergrad in three years, so it'd be just ridiculous to compare myself to people who have traveled a ton or had like five different jobs before or got a different degree. Like, I can't compare myself to that because we're in totally different life situations. At the end of the day, just accept that you are in med school. You are good enough to be there. They accepted you for a reason. There are gonna be moments where you doubt yourself and you think that it's impossible and you're just like, how can anyone expect me to know all this material? But don't let a difficult concept or a bad score on a test or anything like that get to you. Just recognize it as a learning opportunity and recognize that you can only do your best and that is 100% good enough. So I hope you enjoyed this video about how to tackle the didactic years. If you haven't already, please give this video a like if it helped you and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of how I tackle medical school and how I keep balance in my life.